Hi again guys, and so we've got another special projects replica build for you today. And this time it's a replica of a racing model which hasn't been featured on Gran Turismo since Gran Turismo 2. And it was one of the quickest British cars in the game back on GT2. It's the Lotus Esprit GT1 race car. It was kind of overshadowed by the Elise GT1 on the game, which I would personally love them to bring back to Gran Turismo. But I would also love to see the Esprit GT1 return, because it was a seriously cool car. Now, as far as specs, unfortunately we can't get it to be exactly accurate to the actual Esprit GT1 spec especially as far as weight, being that the real GT1 is far, far lighter than we can get the car to be on the game. So we've adjusted the specs a little bit to make it more PP relevant, but still overall it has appropriate specs for a GT1 class machine. So, as always, I'll show you first of all the visual setup of this car, then we'll go over of course to the garage for the mechanical setup, and finally out to the track to see how it performs. So as far as the visual setup on this particular model, thankfully there are some visual parts which we can install on this car because of its being a premium model. So you want the Type A body kit, which the main thing that that adds is a chin splitter at the front. There is unfortunately no flat floor on this one, which is a real shame. As far as the rear wing, we've got a custom wing, as you can see, we've got the Type A wing support, the Type C wing itself, and then the Type E winglets. And as far as size, we've gone for plus 15 on width and plus 3 on height. Because you don't want the, ring, the wing to be ridiculously big, you want it just to be fairly accurate to the real car. As far as the rims, we've gone for standard size, and the particular rims are these Enki JS Plus M rims, which are actually very similar to the actual Esprit GT1's rims. As far as additional meters, obviously just fit whatever you want there, but I've gone for, as you can see, a boost meter, rev counter, and speedo. And as far as the color, I've selected white, and then reduced the brightness down to 30, just to match the existing meters with that kind of dull, off-white appearance. And as far as the paint, obviously I've gone for black with this car, which there were more than one spec of GT1 Esprit. There was, of course, a silver car as well, a number of silver models. So you can pretty much just vary the colour according to what you need. I've chosen to replicate the, the original black version that was on GT2. And the colour that I've gone for, as you can see, is black gloss, which, funnily enough, actually comes from the Lotus Europa Special. So keeping it in the family with the colour. I've left the wheels as the stock dark blackish grey colour and for the brakes I've also gone for gloss black and also for the wing. So a pretty simple visual setup as you can see I've also fitted the number 22 on it which is again similar to one of the Esprit GT1s in this visual spec. So that's it for the overall visual setup of the car so now let's go over to the garage for the mechanical setup. So for the mechanical setup on this particular replica, I've built it for the 575 PP category, which actually puts it quite well matched against some of my other replica builds, such as the Aston Martin DBR9. We've got racing soft tyres, of course. For the brakes, I've gone a little bit different to what I'd usually do. Left the front on 5 and increased the rear to 6. Basically what that does is it keeps the car more straight and true under braking, stops the front end from lunging into corners so much, However, you do want to be careful how much brake pressure you apply because you can lock up the rear wheels, so just be careful of that. For the ride height, we've got it as low as possible. Springs we've increased to 11.75 and 10.25. Dampers to 5. Anti-roll to 7. Camber on 3.5. Neutral toe. For the gearbox, obviously it is powerful, but it's not a top speed tune, so we've gone for an auto setting of 180. Then we've rounded off the individual gears to 3.3, 2150, 1550, 1175 and 900 with a final drive of 3. For the diff we've got the lowest initial torque to reduce wheel spin, high acceleration or as high as possible and 20 for braking. For the power I've fitted everything but the turbo as you can see 
mainly to increase the amount of PP that it can have from said power and also of course the racing exhaust and various other ones such as the computer to increase the max revs also to make it more more like a racing car really to drive. Then we've reduced the power down to 99.6% and this one does have an oil change so bear that in mind. We've increased the rear downforce to 20. You want the full weight loss package and then we've got a 99 kilo ballast which is basically just enough to bring it up to a 50-50 weight split. But although it says 50-50, it's technically more like 49.9 to 50.1. It's not a perfect 50-50 split, because obviously you can add and take more uh, ballast while still remaining on the 50-50 ratio. So if you really want to get technical, it's down to the, the real point of things. So there is slightly more weight over the rear still, which is exactly how you want this car to be to encourage the nose to turn in more. As you can see it sits really nicely at 575 pp. The specs as I said earlier aren't as accurate to real life as I would have liked but got to work with what we've got. So that's it for the mechanical setup of this car. Now let's take it out to the track to see what it can do. So I have to say I'm really happy with how this car drives. The Esprit is Depending on the model, not the easiest of cars to drive. It's a little bit light over the front end and can be a little bit leery sometimes. But this tune really does bring it under control. Now, as I said about the rear brakes, they can lock up. And that's one of the main things that you need to watch out for. Obviously, you don't have to replicate the brake balance that I've gone for, but I do find it quite beneficial on this car. As far as the steering... Any one of you who tries out this tune will probably be surprised by just how stiff it is around corners, just like a racing car. It really does eliminate that really light front end that the car usually has. Now, as far as racing potential, well, I haven't raced it. But for those of you who do decide to use this tune, I hope you find it fun and competitive. And that's it for this build. So I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.